But Deuce in general was just like he was they never any good. good. They don't think they ever had. Who was the guy that had the, the, the good stories on fucking the podcast? Was that it? was Domino. Domino. The power Udi. Power Udi. Die Udi die. Bo Dallas only NXT champion to not do anything significant. Um. You know what? That might be something worth looking up and checking out and you know, possibly seeing. But uh, I'm sure we could find somebody else. You know what the thing? Oh, but the, Bo, what? they're doing stuff with now the too. The guy that came from NXT, they won the Andre Giant Corbin, Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin. Nah, no, 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 he's no. he's. But he, I mean, he's be still doing stuff. Mm. But like, I think they had a lot of potential in Corbin. He just never fucking like caught on. Gangrel. Not a bust at all. You don't think so? Dude, all these years later, how many people remember his fucking entrance? Yeah, but... Oh. How many people remember that Outback Jack song? You. Well. <laughs> That's about it. You well, and, I like... I say Gangrel's because he was the guy that they were supposed to be getting the, you know, the push behind, and it didn't go to him. Yes and no. They were... If you listen to Pritchard's podcast, he was saying they had originally done it, but the second they got Edge around, which wasn't long after his debut, they knew that Edge was the guy. I heard that when they were doing a promo in the ring that Gangrel just started fumbling and I just picked it up and went with it. And that's how they knew it wasn't going to be Gangrel. Uh, you could... Gangrel even said it himself. He goes, you spent so many years fucking making people look good that, you know, getting over wasn't super hard. I mean, it wasn't super easy for him. So we're just so used to fucking making dudes look good. Uh, who else, Anthony? What's it? You was at my show, Crab. Hey, what's going on, Anthony? How you doing? How are you, James McGrady says that Gangrel helped Edge and the Hardy Boys. Why am I rotating my phone? You shut up, phone. He did. He helped Edge. He helped the Hardy Boys, Christian. Oh, you know, all those guys were getting over with him. It was a uh, no super board. Kevin Thorne. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. The Mordecai character. Dude, that, that guy was supposed to fucking go after The Undertaker. That didn't even last long. He just he wasn't good. <laughs> he set me up a few times for I mean, you don't run the... It depends. If you ran a kind of show like, uh, you know, like PWS used to, where, like, you could put him, you know, the vampire against the fucking mummy. You book fucking, uh... We're fucking Ron Re Reese. Ron Reese from fucking down there and have him just... The Yeti! That was a bust. It wasn't around long enough to be a bust. <laughs> it for a month. Hit that. Go back to Ultimo. So Juba really wants to hear about Ultimo because Juba likes to think that he's five foot six. Why is he... The guy didn't do anything. The guy, the guy, they brought him in. And yeah, fell I mean, down on the pay per view. With yeah, yeah. I'll be real with you. When I saw him fall down at the pay per view, I, I was they, like, "That's they edited it done." The network, though. That's not they awesome. may have. I don't know. I haven't really rewatched, re 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 but uh, yeah. Also, I think the the issue is is that WCW allowed their cruiserweights to kind of uh, just go. Like here, you've got ten minutes. Then Hogan's got a 10-minute promo. Then Mike Enos is going to wrestle for three. Then another 10 minutes of cruiserweights. So they gave them a the time to get over and do their thing. And then, uh... And then, I mean, after a while, I was just like, well, WWE isn't letting the cruiserweights do shit. They get five minutes. Ultimo? Ultimo isn't a guy who could do five minutes. Rey Mysterio will give you the flashy shit. Paul London will give you the flashy shit. Chavo could do the flashy shit. Ultimo is a technical wrestler. That's not going to get over, you know? It was a five-minute match. It's not going to work. I, Taz is another guy I think they thought they were going to get more out of when he came up. You know what? I hoped, now that I've been in wrestling for, for this long, I realize that Taz didn't have a snowball's chance in hell. Uh, I'll give you one Malenko answer why. He's another guy, too. Eh, nah, Malenko would always was always going to be a mid-carder. He said one. Uh, what Taz. What was the thing that held Taz back? Size. Yep. You put Taz out there next to Triple H, it he's going to... It looked ridiculous. Yeah. I think I've got a foot of height on him. Well, so well, the thing with Taz was he was a big, you know, a big fish in a small pond over there at ECW. Yeah, but, but here's the thing. If, if you had Taz nowadays in WWE where guys are a lot smaller, that wouldn't be the issue. It wouldn't be a big fish in a small pond. He'd be great. But at the time, still landed the Giants. Yeah. Someone asked me who my uh, favorite guy in WWE right now is uh, either Elias or Nakamura. Elias, I think, is the, the next Elias. big fucking thing. Yeah, He's like wonderful. Him. Jake, remember Nathan jo Oh, my God. Nathan Jones. The guy that was, uh, milk was coming out of his nipples. Is that the guy? 
I don't know. I don't know why you would know Milk would come out of his yeah, nipples. Yeah, it's like a rumor about him. Yeah, he uh, he was so bad they didn't even put him in the WrestleMania match. Dude, how fucking... That's craziness. He was so not ready. They didn't put him in the WrestleMania match. That was craziness. But the other guy, too, then. You gotta go Matt Morgan was another guy that, you know... He was in that Survivor Series match in 03. Never went anywhere. Big dude. Then he went to TNA. You know what I'm talking about? No, but he wasn't. A, that was the thing. TNA made him no longer a bust. WWE shit the bet. You know why WWE shit the bet on him, Joe? No idea. Do you remember his gimmick? No. He was a stutterer. You get this guy who's seven foot tall. You know why they call him the fucking blueprint in TNA? Because literally they took a look at the guy's DNA to kind of look at like what like perfect fucking DNA is. That's how great of an athlete he is. All right, I think NASA like preserved his DNA as like perfection of human DNA. Mm. And they've got this guy as a stutterer. And expect him to get over. What's CJ saying? Nathan Jones was pulled from a tag match with The Undertaker as his partner. Of course, CJ knows that. Yeah, for real. Uh, Nathan Jones. Wow. Who brought him up? Uh, Chris Wren. Juice Robinson may be one of the greatest guys. You know what? So here's the thing, Dallas. Uh, Dallas is going to talk about Juice Robinson. So Juice Robinson, I wouldn't consider a bust because that guy was always an enhancement talent in... Uh, in uh, NXT, he was always out there putting people over. He had little programs here and there, but his goal was always to make other people look good. And him walking away and going to New Japan, which, by the way, if you guys have the opportunity to watch Juice Robinson in New Japan, fuck is he good, man. Oh, man, is he so good. Uh, Yeah. Making his career out there, man. Went to the dojos, was a young boy, and now is uh, just wrestling in front of, like, thousands of Wrestle Kingdom. Excuse me, craziness. But that's awesome. It's not really a bust so much because they never had plans for him. He knew that. That's why he left. Who else you got in mind as a bust, Joe? Los Pariquas. Look, really? Except for Savio. I don't think they were, but they were all were fucking like cannon fodder. As with anything the same about the fucking Disciples of Apocalypse. They weren't really a fucking oh, bust. Uh, who else? It was someone I just had in mind that I was going to go for. Oh! Shockmaster is the biggest bust, in my for opinion. For WCW, because he did pretty well for himself as the other two gimmicks. Right, but here's the thing about Shockmaster. They were bringing him in to immediately be in a main event match. And he was going to be a main event player. Great. Yeah. So you have this guy that you're immediately going to make a main event, and literally before his first match, he fucking flops. Literally. And oh, figured I, I, I can agree with that. But the person himself did pretty well for Oh, himself. Uncle Fred. Uncle Fred's a good dude. He shit all over the fucking match that I had with uh, Chachi that one time. Hated it. He's one of the nicest guys. Oh, he's a really nice. He's a really, really nice guy. But he hated my match, and I'll always stick with me. Always. Uncle Fred hated my match. Oh, Joe's trying to kill us. Anybody else off the top of your head? Someone mentioned Shane Douglas in WWE. I don't necessarily think that was a bust. Well, only because wasn't a bust in ECW. But like, he wasn't a bust in WWE either. Only because. That character and Shane were never going above Intercontinental title. Love you too, Sharon. Battle Cat. Oh, and Sharon says congratulations. On the, 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 she's been to your shows. She's a oh. friend of mine. Uh, Brian says Adam Bomb. He was never more than a mid-carder. I'm talking guys that they had primed for, like, big-time status. Because if you bust as a mid-carder, who the fuck cares? No one's paying to see you. But if you bust as a guy they're trying to put up top... They'll never give that opportunity. And I'm gonna, and yeah. I'm gonna, later on, I'm going to be like, fuck, I, there, was, there was this guy. I'm sure there's, there's probably more guys in WCW that you could say are busting. Because WWE, for the most part, is usually good about who they want to pry, you know, give the ball to. WCW has always been a disaster. I think, you know who else? I, you know what? I take back what I said about mid-card bust. There's only one mid-card bust. That, to me is a complete and utter bust and that the, the gimmick never would have been made event or anything it's a WWE gimmick from the late 80s never would have did, was buried literally the second he debuted do I know this person? 100% take a guess name me one gimmick from the 80s that was booed out of the building upon its debut Goblin Cougar yep but that wasn't meant to wrestle huh? yeah it was it was? wrestled yeah there are matches out there he wrestled house shows Crowd should deliver it too. Oh really? Yep. That I did not know. Yep. I thought that was just supposed to be like a mascot thing. If it was so, here's the thing: if it was gonna be a, a yeah, I think logically, if it was gonna be a mascot, why wouldn't they just put fucking Earl Hebner under it? 
They put fucking Hector Guerrero, Hector Guerrero who can work his ass off. Mm -hmm. Del Rio, somebody mentioned. Hey, what's going no, on? He was Aiden. a champion. He was a champion, but I think it was a bust in terms of like potential. And I mean, it's fucking full. Yeah, I mean, you know, people busting this shit up themselves. What about Rhino now? Rhino's happy with the position he's got now. That's not a bust Rhino's at all. Rhino's had a nice long career. Yeah, that dude is 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 a comedy character right now. He wrestles, you know, for five minutes on main event or whatever, and he's making his money. That guy is, like, is far from a bust, man. He's had his career. He's happy just doing what he's doing. I would, I would, Rhino's been around for a long, long time. I, I definitely wouldn't say him. I think anybody who's only seen Rhino in WWE currently needs to go back and see his run in ECW, and that guy was a legitimate you, it was, monster. It was, it was a bust. Uh, I wouldn't say he's a bust because he was successful in, in a tag team. He went to singles, and he did the brawl for all and won at Bark Gun. And then after that, when he lost to Butterbean, that was it for him. He did the Midnight Express thing, and he really floundered. But if you ask people uh, about the situation, they'll some people are, have it rumored that, like, oh, that match though, against Butterbean, they knew he was going to knock the fuck out. They knew he was going to get crushed. Since Steve Williams, I think, it. would be a bust in WWE, despite the career he had. Oh, that. yeah. Because he had a good career before that. Very good career. How you going to put this big old man in there against all these dudes who are looking to fight for money? I also love the fact that Brad Sharp has ass handed to him and everything. Hakeem, the African dream. <laughs> Zack Ryder, Nick Speranzo said. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I definitely would say so. There goes the fucking mid card uh, bust. Only because, again, it had nothing to do with him. It's fucking company didn't get behind him. And I'm surprised they did it because the crowd organically wanted to see him do good. <sighs> we can continue this conversation another time. Uh, while Juba sits there and he gets excited about Ultimo Dragon. We thank you for joining us. Please maybe find your... Ne hold on. Maybe <laughs> next week we'll recap our shows. We'll talk about the biggest WOW buffs. Matt Kaplan. <laughs> Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us out on YouTube. Wow TV Live. Check me out. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, King of Chaos, NYC. Show us some love. And please, Friday and two shows Saturday, come on down. All the shows are going to kick ass. Friday... The uh, Frankie Gets Memorial Show. Saturday, 5 p.m. we start? F Saturday's 4 p.m. 4 p.m. start time on that women's show, Women of Warriors 4. And then at 8 p.m., Cold Fury, Warriors of Wrestling, main event, Jimmy Jacobs, Darius Carter, for the King of Chaos, the boss man. Goodbye. Goodbye.